Amen. I laid this down. I'm going to lay it down again. And this is about Acts 2. And I want to make a, a, a very, very strong point. I think I'm really on to something today. This is very, very exciting for me to ask people, ask the hearts of all God's people, to ask them a very, very, very hard question. I just preached in Acts 2. I'm going to talk about some of the same things. But I'm going to talk about a couple other things as well in order to start to set it up, okay? Um, two things that David said, okay, in the Psalms. The Psalms are they're filled with song and praise and sorrow, but they're also filled, filled with the terror of God. Two different places David said something that should be a very shocking, a very shocking, sobering scripture for us to fear God in and to tremble as if we are afraid for our eternal soul. One where he says, Lord, speak, and if you don't speak, I be like them who goeth into the pit. I be like them that go to the pit if you don't speak to me. That's scary number one. Scary number two is he says, if I hold iniquity in my heart, the Lord does not hear my prayers. I've heard it said that when we pray, God hears us. We need to know that. And I'm like, well, if you're holding iniquity in your heart, you can be sure he's not. The only thing that's ever going to get God's attention is people either interceding for your soul that's, lo that's w lost and walked away from the truth, or a heart crying out to God and interceding for yourself that you may be called again. You'll be called again and drawn by the Spirit of God to truth when you can understand something very real. If he's not talking, your knees should be knocking. If he's not talking, your knees should be knocking. The reason the power of God hit so heavy at Pentecost is because the light was shining so clear and 3,000 came to the Lord. Oh, we love to hear about all that, don't we? Oh, look at all these people came to Jesus. Isn't that exciting? Oh, look at that. Whoa, we've seen people. Now people are doing the same thing today. And I'm like, but there's some things missing in there. There was a pie that they built there. It was a Pentecost pie. And there was all these different pieces to the pie that matched the apostles' doctrine. It was the apostles' doctrine. There was miracles. There was salvation. There was repentance. Everything any real Christian would ever want to see, the apostles' doctrine was the whole Pentecostal pie. There was all everything. And one thing that was there was the people were fearful of God. And they knew they were lost. I'm trying to get the Christian church today to know they're lost. I want you to stop trying to lie to yourself. Stop, stop trying to comfort yourself when you know you're not hearing from God. I want you to stop comforting yourself while you know you're not hearing from God. And if you ever find yourself at one of them weirdo meetings where you got some weird witch doctor putting his hand on your head and you got somebody telling you all kinds of junk you don't need to know, all this stuff to prop yourself up while you know you're not hearing from God. That's evidence that you're not hearing from God. You're not going to heaven. You are lost. We have to get unsaved in order to get really saved. We have to get unsaved from the false gospel so we can get truly saved by the true gospel and get back to the apostles' pie, or back to the apostles' doctrine and Pentecostal pie with the fear, repentance, and baptism and everything else the Bible says is supposed to be there. The apostles' doctrine is only real when we have the true foundations laid out as they are supposed to in the book of Acts, chapter 2, right when the Holy Ghost starts it off in power, power, power. That's what happened there. The whole thing was laid out. The whole thing is laid out as clear as can be, and we miss it. This message is not made clear. Right now it's going to be made clear. These people responded with a passion. Passion. 